Hello everyone, Civic Extraordinaire here, and I am quite excited today because we are getting to take a really early uh, access look at uh, Imperator Rome, and this is actually a new screen because I am getting to play the Marius update and the Heirs of Alexander DLC early. So I've actually taken the chance to practice and get some footage in before uh, for my review for the DLC itself and the updates, um, but I've basically taken uh, the time to get some practice in and play the game, but I'm really excited because this is the first time I've ever gotten early access to a major title like Imparato Room, and as a small YouTuber with 200 subscribers, that is really um, just helpful to the channel, and I really appreciate Paradox um, giving me a chance to test out the beta for the Marius update. So again, thank you to the, develop the developers uh, for, um, well, I actually reached out to the developers, but um, Thank you for uh, opening dialogue with me and allowing me to uh, test out the new Marius update. But since the Marius update and Heirs of Alexander really focus around the area of the Antigonids, Anatolia specifically, and kind of the aftermath of Alexander's death, especially with the um, kind of three giants here, the Antigonids, the Seleucids, and Egypt, and Macedon, and Thrace to a lesser extent, um, but these are kind of the three major powers, and you have Moria off in the distance with India. But I wanted to take a look at one of the smaller kingdoms, because playing a larger kingdom like the Antigonids, I mean, it's fun, they get some flavor. But I mean, I like to play the underdog, and I kind of like to carve out my own legacy. I've actually taken a few test runs in Spain and France, and even I've settled a colony in like Yazigiana all the way out in rural Hungary, just to kind of test out some of the new mechanics. And there is some... Uh, flavorful changes. I've noticed the UI has changed a ton. For example, the UI has moved from like up here to down here. And then there's this huge giant multiplayer interface tab. But I kind of want to take a look at Byzantium, not only because um, they have an awesome color and an awesome flag, but I kind of want to make my own challenge to make Byzantium one of the best cities um, with the most development and build a ton of wonders. So that's kind of what I really wanted to do with uh, this update and DLC in particular because it adds wonders and a ton of other mechanics that we'll get into. But enough talking from me, let's quickly go into the um, event here, Alexander the Great, Argead. 18 years ago, the Argead king Alexander III died suddenly in Babylon at the age of 32. In the five years preceding his death, his continuing military successes had reshaped the world as known to the Greeks, his empire stretching uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The suddenness of Alexander's early death and his lack of a chosen successor sent shockwaves through the hierarchy of satraps and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by these potentates, styled as the Diadochi. For many years, they and their successors have been locked in a bitter struggle over the future of the empire, drawing all nations within their sphere in the influence of the conflict. The wars of the Diadochi will surely continue, perhaps it is up to Byzantium to decide how they will end. All right, that is a pretty cool intro, um, and you only really get that intro if you're a propontic culture or around the Antigonid's sphere of influence. I don't think playing is some of the, um, I've taken a look at the cultures around here in the, the uh, smaller empires, and I guess they're just local powers, but some of the one province or two province miners um, in the underbelly of the Antigonid, Antigonids did not receive some of those events, which was kind of interesting. Um, but, as Byzantian we do, since we are Propontic, I think. But, uh, let's go ahead and get Basileus, because we want to increase our yields, or our population. That's really important for our levies, because one of the new mechanics for uh, Marius, uh, and not just Heirs of Alexander, is that, basically, not only has the entire UI been changed, but with the levy system, let me just find this here. You now do not create your own army. You basically raise levies. I mean, you can do that later with legions, but we're, that's kind of for um, empires and larger uh, states. So right now, since we're a three-province minor and a local power, we really don't have that much influence. We have 28 pops, but uh, we'll probably need about 100 or 200 to start really looking into legions. I'm not too sure. But I've actually played um, Byzantium quite a few times because it's kind of fun to stir around around here. But basically the strategy I've kind of found, oh and we have a new tech tree too, but um, I'll briefly tell you about my strategy. Basically the strategy with Byzantion so far is that you want to basically placate Thrace, uh, because they will definitely gobble you up 
early on. I kind of find that they um, ally with you, but then they kind of break off their alliance uh, because they want to eat you up. But then they get into a war with the Antigonids or Macedon. So there's a lot of early fighting uh, going on between the Seleucids, the Antigonids, and Egypt, depending on how um, the events play out, which is really cool. It kind of reminded me of Hearts of Iron 4 in the way that characters interact with each other and the huge amount of detail that Paradox has paid to all of the mechanics um, individually in the Marius update has really blown me away so far. If only they could put that much attention to the other parts of the game, I really think Imperator would stand out amongst Paradox's other historical 4Xs, but I think this is a great starting point. Um, and we're going to grab basically um, two new techs here. We have eight total innovations. Um, and another detail, I'll be pointing this out a lot, but um, since they've been revamping the tech tree and everything, some of the, um, unfortunately, some of the less cultured and less technologically advanced civilizations don't even get the options to pick from innovations. They get like zero. So the fact that we get start out with eight um, is pretty significant. Um, let's go ahead and get standardized measures, import value. That's always great. And then I think we'll probably get maybe another import route. And let's get fatalities. Aggression impact, that'll be really helpful. Okay. Ooh, we even have tributary administration. We're not really big enough to kind of mess around with tributaries. It's kind of the Antigonids business, but let's get, get due process. We have one more slot. I think I'll try to get them uh, balanced across the board for now because tech balance can be a bit important. I haven't been punished too much by it, but let's go ahead and get accepted rights. But um, it can be significant if you uh, don't pay attention and are a larger empire because it's kind of the theme of this update is not only war with Marius, but also administrating your empire. We want to import some goods here. Um, I love just how much easier it is to sort all this stuff. I think we want to go and get horses from... What is this? I'm going to have a lot of trouble pronouncing these names. Latin is not Latin and Greek aren't my strong suits. But uh, I'm going to guess Potu Latensia. And this will help with population output. And I think it also allows us to recruit light cavalry. Um, so since we can't auto-build light cavalry, we're going to have to rely on giving horses to Byzantium, I think, to build levies. I'm not too sure on how that works. But let's go ahead and get base metals. This helps with our light infantry offense. And it also helps with our freemen. So we're going to want to be um, increasing the happiness um, for our freemen. So we're not running into any issues early on. Speaking of issues, we already have disloyal characters. Um, I kind of find loyalty and tyranny are kind of hard to get a uh, get a uh, lid on or whatever because my last game as Byzantion, um, in one of my practice matches, I managed to get up to 100 tyranny because um, an issue we are going to run onto later on is going to be um, annexing local territories. And sometimes the Senate doesn't always like when you um, send half of the country to war. So that can be a bit of a problem. But... Let's go ahead and import another uh, resource. Thanks to our tech. I think we want what? Mm. We already have earthenware. Which I probably should have pointed out earlier. We have a lot of slaves, so we might want to appease them. Let's go ahead and try to get some olives. Alright, Syria. Thank you. And also, the Antigonids do tend to lose territory a lot. Like 9 out of 10 times they do have problems with successor kingdoms. And kind of the um, boring part, I guess you could say, of the, Byz uh, the Byzantines, or the Byzantians, the Byzantianites, I don't know. But um, one of the hard parts is waiting for the Antigonids to split up, because if you'll notice, this has actually changed with um, Bithynia and some of the neighboring powers like Chalcedon, where they are now a tributary. So I can't immediately attack them. I am like one of the few independent states here. So... I just need to be patient, and while I'm doing that, I'll try to befriend and get some allies just to help me ward off the race for the time being. Okay. But I guess we can always try to ally Thrace. Let me actually combine my navy here. I hope the music isn't too loud. You, Ioannis. Oh, this is also another interesting character. Um, because the devs, right when they published the game, they hid themselves. This is Johan, uh, the lead director, um, former lead director of... Uh, Imperato Rome, you can see he gave himself like the best martial stats. Um, unfortunately, he is kind of popular, so we won't want to be um, putting him to our main army. I think he's fine just being assigned to our um, ship here. Um, but he's a bit cocky, just like Johan, <laughs> who leads the development team, or who formerly led it. Let's go ahead and get harassment. 
And let's get a free idea slot. Here we go. Okay. I think we want to get national slave output. Plus 20% is pretty hefty. As well as plus 20% commerce income. And then we are going to be wanting to increase our civilization. But, um, yeah. Subject states and monthly ruler popularity I don't think are things that we aren't going to be too concerned about. Because we kind of switch rulers frequently. You'll notice that as a republic. But, um... Don't worry about cultural integration, just encourage trade. And I think we want to go ahead and slowly start out here. We might want to befriend Thrace. Thrake, not too sure. But uh, there we go. Thrace has always kind of been uh, a tough competitor as Byzantion when you start out your empire. And, oh, I have another import route. Okay. Let's go ahead and get grain for that population. But, uh, okay, we already, we already have a civil war. I love this game. Um, you know what? Give free hands. That's kind of the default cock block, block option. So we can get that guy, um, I guess, sedate him. And then we can try to make friends. Or we could grant holdings. I haven't kind of messed around messed around with um, granting holdings too much yet. He isn't too popular and he is fairly loyal. So I think we may be able to uh, rein him in. But I actually want to take a look at the missions. Because we have a unique mission, the hospital, Hospitable Sea. Okay, and Thrace is already breaking their alliance with us. Let me, um, first of all, try to get an ally in Scythia. We will improve relations with you. And I want to also, let me see. Mm. Okay, ally Scythia, and then I'm thinking maybe we ally Mariandinia. Because you are, like, not a subject state, are you? Ugh, decisions, decisions. Let me think. Okay. Maybe it's, it might be a good idea to ally Paphlosia. Because these guys tend to get in a, um... Defensive pact. So, I'm thinking maybe ally Paphlosia. And you will take my alliance. Okay. That's fine. Um, Thrace is definitely going to break their alliance. I just wanted to test it out because... Uh, third or fourth time's the charm. Um, but let's go ahead and look at our missions. The hospital see The events of the past 100 years have proven the need for the de the disparate colonies of the... Maybe they mean desperate. Colonies of Pontus Uxinus Uxi Uxi to band together voluntarily or by force. If they are to survive the rise of successors, foreign emulators, and barbarians. And we need to establish a Uxine hegemony. All right. And we gain in hospital. We'll see. What is this? Okay, I, I don't think I've actually gotten this event before. Okay, that's really weird. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll take the uh, free ex expansion uh, option. We already have the first achievement done. And this is basically going to allow us to get a free port. So we have an option of the ports we can go ahead and barter for. But, um... Basically, we're going to be asking a state to borrow one of their ports or buy it from them. Kind of similar to the Brandenburg option to buy off Newmark from, I think it is, the Teutons. Um, but just to kind of increase our chance with Bithynia, I found that buying territory from them, since they are a kind of a close staging point to get into Anatolia as the Byzantines, uh, you want to improve their opinion. And then um, just try to go on from there. So let's go ahead and try to, um, I don't know, actually. Maybe we'll bait a bit until we improve their opinion, and then we'll go after that quest. But we can see we are kind of straining our relations here. We can only have one alliance since we are a local power. Um, but not to worry. I don't think two um, states will be too much. And we have a war in Greece already. <laughs> yeah. Um, it gets pretty chaotic, thankfully, with the Marius update. And I don't mind that because um, as Byzantine or Byzantion, you will be a bit snag stagnant early on. But the Antigonids in their hubris and folly have chosen to once again resume hostilities with Cassandros e... Uh, or Cass <laughs> I'm already screwing it up. Cassandros I Antipatrid of Macedon in a vain attempt to prove dominance over those known as the Diadochi. We can only wait to see what effect this will have upon the politics of the known world and how many sons must die to sate the bloodthirsty appetites of tyrant kings. That seems to be a theme of this pack. Alright, and we already have troubling developments. Alright, recently we have seen that our center, Brinkazis, 
Kerosol Blip Petite. I hate these names. Um, Alright, whatever. Uh, Brinkazi, basically. Um, as well as those under his charge have been doing a disappointing job. It seems people having issues with them keep reporting back to us how difficult they are to work with. When talking to the man, he claims it is simply a matter of bureaucracy being difficult and that the funds for his office have been lacking lately, of course. He wants to uh, embezzle us. But uh, he makes sure to mention repeatedly that it would most likely work out if only they were... <laughs> Alright, I know where this is going. Um, uh, okay, I mean, I guess we need more loyalty because... Okay, this isn't a bad option because we kind of need to uh, rein him in since he is low. On loyalty, we'll bring him up to 5. Maybe we can even grant him free hands. Though he is already pretty corrupt. So, okay. Maybe slightly corrupt, 5%, basically. Uh, let's go ahead and get give Egypt military access. As Byzantium, since we do have access to Thrace um, and the Strait, we will be getting a lot of requests for access. Okay. Excuse me, traditionalist legislation, the route, the bull, boule, the bull of Byzantion is for once again stacked with members and allies of the traditionalist who are using this rare opportunity to enshrine laws protecting their interests. They are sure to succeed unless our Archon uses their power of veto. Hmm. You know what, I think we are going to want to... Uh... We are going to want to curry favor with the assembly because early on uh, we are going to need their approval for wars. So that claim cost isn't too bad. Actually, speaking of claims, I want to get a claim on Calcadon already because they are an easy target and their 20 pop city is very uh, important in kind of raising our initial levies. Because starting out we only have four troops, so we are a bit smaller. Um, and since we can't auto recruit troops, it is a bit more painful. Uh, in terms of growing pains. But speaking of growing pains and recruiting, I want to go ahead and buy some chips, uh, preferably Labrunians, and I think two starting out will be fine. You know what, maybe four. <laughs> uh, just to get us to eight. Okay. And of course, Thrace broke their alliance with us. Wonderful. You know, what, I'm just going to save just because I'm a, I am a bit. Uh, cautious just because the AI can be pretty unpredictable in this patch. So far it's been fairly stable though. So I'm actually going to kind of turn the volume down a bit because I noticed it is getting a bit excessive. So Okay, here we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm just kind of worried you guys might be, uh, the music might be blaring a bit too loud here. But, um, okay. We have this nice little thing here. I'll turn off the cute events. I don't want to block too much of the screen. And, okay, basically we're doing a bit of a waiting game. I don't know if I'll cut, uh, but we can speed up a bit. Here we go. Okay, and so I guess right now we're just waiting for the fabrication of the claim, which will play out later, and then um, for Bithynia to break off. But we are kind of improving our relations with them. Maybe we'll send a little bit of a gift, and then we can launch our action here to... Uh, Basically, go ahead and try to buy out things. All right, they did act. Thrace did ask ask for military access, so that is a good thing. And what do we want here? Go ahead and barbarian bartering. As Benis of the Skullstotogids is organizing merchant parties to survey the various barbarian cities, assessing their value and the current owner's availability. All right, commence appraising. Okay. Here are the ports we have. We have we actually have quite a few options. And I've experimented with quite a few of them. Alright, Paphlagodia, Calpe. Okay. The merchants sent by Esbinus have returned with a list of possible harbors we may be able to purchase the use of. They also indicate that what we would need to offer, what the current owner's appetites, if it is possible at all. Okay. There are other options. Okay. No, there are other options. Okay, they seem to not want to um, give me Rebas. <laughs> so, okay, they're unlikely to accept if I try to take Kalpe, but I'm just going to go ahead and propose anyway, just because, I mean, we've kind of invested in them. So, I mean, it's either this or not. Okay, and they did give us Kalpe. So, the merchant sent by Esbinus Skostok... 
these Greek names. All right. Esbinus Skostodokid to negotiate with Bithynia have returned with terms of acceptance from the barbarian king Zipoetes. We have already dispatched the promised funds along with a party of magistrates who will o- oversee the administration of Calpe as a Byzantine Byzantine port. Okay. And we are going to lose some money here, but we can just barely afford it. So thank you for Calpe, and we will assign a new governor. Okay. You are not too popular, and I guess you are assertive. So we can take you. Okay. All right, we will take you, and that should be good. But we did buy Calpe. Unfortunately, we did not get the option for Raybas. I don't know if that was a bug or anything. Um, we, we have do, do you have an event here? Right, Distraught officials from the province of Europa are reporting that a not insubstantial portion of the province's grain reserves have been allowed to fester and rot away due, the, to the ineff- due to the ineffably incompetent practices used to store them. The local people are in uproar at their toil being wasted so frivolous, frivolously and worry about having to go, go hungry. All look to us for justice in this scarcely unbelievable scandal. Okay, man, we are quite the... Uh, hotbed of um, internal affairs here. Okay, and Thrace is already claiming on us. Um, I think this is actually a good spot to end the episode because I don't know how long I want to time these episodes right now, but as an introductory episode um, I think we have made some substantial gains. We have bought Calpe and we are kind of looking to expand our influence outward to Scythia. So if you guys have liked this episode and um, have liked the first look at Marius this should be releasing Tuesday when the embargo lifts. I am recording this about on Friday. Um, but if you guys have liked this episode, uh, this has been Civic Extraordinaire. Please leave a like, uh, comment, um, your opinion on the Marius update so far, uh, what you're most excited to see. And uh, please subscribe if you do like the content so far. Um, but again, uh, have fun with the Marius update, and I look, to see you, I look forward to seeing you guys on episode two. All right, peace.